13 actually. That's right. Man. Let me tell you something. I had this genius idea. I'll tell you in a second. Let's do it after the drop. We're live. I had this terrible idea. I'm literally waiting to hit the button to go live. And all of a sudden, I, I see this thing where I'm like, oh, you know what? If I flip this switch, I can marginally improve the stream quality in a way that maybe only I will recognize. Why don't I try it with 30 seconds to air? And sure enough, everything goes wrong. Now I'm two minutes late starting the broadcast. I was literally making my coffee today thinking, well, you know, we're 13 episodes in. We've started on time. We haven't had these stream drops. It's all been going great. And what do I do? I walk back in here with my coffee still warm, and I kill the stream with 30 seconds left! Ah! I'm mad at myself. But that's okay, because the key is that now it is working. And you guys are hearing me, and so, great. I hope everyone's had a good week. How was, how was everybody's week? Did we... Tell me in the comments, are, are, we, are we making music... First of all, are we making more music less music or the same music as we did in a world where we sort of had things we could go out and do. Like, in a weird way, I could see both sides of the argument that when I used to be able to go to concerts, like I would get inspired and therefore make more music. But now that I'm not going out to concerts and I'm needing to make my own music, maybe I'm making more music. I actually don't know what the what the trade-off is there. I do know that when I'm working on videos, that's actually when I make the most music because I need material for videos. So um, that uh, that is definitely a thing. It's actually the, I guess, I don't know if you could call the most in inspiring. I don't know if um, fear of a deadline can be counted as inspiration, but I do make my most music when I'm working on videos. Uh, in other news, I look at this. I broke the handle off of my mug. This may be the last stream that we see the in unintentional Starbucks product placement in using this mug. All my other mugs in life are 12 ounce mugs, and this is a, a 16 ounce mug, and maybe most of the world doesn't even know what an, an ounce is. How many milliliters? Like 500 milliliters? 400 milliliters? I don't know. Anyway, um, so it's been a good week though. Here, let me tell you my big news. I'm letting everybody just get into the stream. You know how it works. If you've been here before, you know that we kind of let the stragglers get in before we get down to business. Um, here's my exciting week. Guys, I'm going to lean in and tell you. I played a gig. And I know that that on its face, just that headline might sound wildly irresponsible uh, in, a, in a quarantine, lockdown, uh, social distancing kind of world. But allow me to explain. I uh, I play I play some gigs with a group of people um, that uh, fiddle banjo that that sort of my my other world you know, and um, the the fiddle and banjo player got contacted by some neighbors that lived on their block and they said like, you know we all the all of us neighbors have been talking, and we are craving live music and we know you guys play something fiddle and banjo I guess would you guys mind just like standing out on the street on our block and just at a time that we are made aware of and um, play, just play, you guys just pl play some music, whatever you want. We just want to hear notes coming out of a resonating instrument because we miss it. And, you know, Facebook and z live streams and, and Zoom jams and all the things that are going on for musicians are cool, but there's a difference. There's a difference to experiencing music live. So... Anyway, so they, they reached out to me. They said, would well, you want to play uh, with us? Um, of course. Of course I did. And so what we did is we set up on this person's front yard. And um, and the neighbors came. Like, you know, it was, it was actually a really special thing. Because, first of all, it was safe. Everybody was, was keeping their distance from each other. We were outdoors. We were keeping our distance from each other. We were all standing, you know, normally we'll kind of crowd around a mic and, and 
harmonize and sing and play into a mic. This time we had the mic gained up, you know, and pushed back like seven feet or something from us. And then we were forming sort of a, uh, maybe I should speak in meters, a two meter per person half circle around the mic that was 2.2 meters away. Um, but, uh, so yeah, um, we, I'm looking at the comments. I don't know why Stefan's commenting on the, my choice of flannel, though I did realize I'm running out of uh, new shirts for you guys. I'm going to have to order some new shirts just so that I'm not recycling all the same. Uh, not that that matters, but it's weird. It's like I realized, it's, I, I just became aware of how few shirts I own when I think of these live streams because suddenly it's like, oh, that one again. Anyway, so so we set up on this front yard and and at the time that the neighbors had been emailing on their little lists, all of a sudden, like, People showed up, like a lot of people. I don't know what the full head, what the full head count was because some people, you know, they they were there for a lot of it, but then they bailed. But we took a picture, and in the picture, there's 60 people. I did a little Where's Waldo and counted all the little dots there. So 60 people that came out just sat in like lawn chairs on the street. You know, some people up on their their uh, porches and doorsteps. Some people kind of on the sidewalk. Some people were standing. Some people were sitting down on their little chairs. People that had been quarantining together, you know, husbands and wives and couples and whatever, they were sitting together, but then everyone was keeping their distance. People were wearing masks. It was a, a totally, like, solid execution. I have to, like, I want to give it to the uh, props to the neighbors for actually doing the, you know, doing their part well, which is cool because I, that was my only reservation was, like, I didn't want to create a scenario where we gather a crowd that actually puts people at risk because suddenly that's like that's weird but anyway here look let me i'll show you i i loaded into the stream so this photo that's everybody that's our vantage point on the yard in fact you can actually maybe you can see in the corner is a reverse angle of us standing there on the yard but um there there everybody is and oh my god it was just it was really fun i really i didn't know how much I was going to enjoy, I thought when they asked me to show up and do this, I thought, oh, okay, yeah, you, I mean, I'll gladly get together and play music with people if we're being safe, but um, I just expected some people were going to walk by walking their dog and maybe the, the two people that own the house would kind of stand off to the side and watch us for a little bit, but even then maybe they'd start making dinner or something. But it was um, it was great. People were enjoying it. People were dancing in the streets. People were, um, even the cars, like a car would turn down the street to drive because after all, it is a street in a major American city. They would turn down the street to start driving and then they go, oh, oh, uh, uh, 60 people sitting on lawn chairs in the street. No problem. Let me just back up. And they would just take another street. No honking. No, I mean, Jesus, you know, as terrible as it is, there's been some people that have done entirely different things when they see people in the streets that they decide to uh, go through with force. So uh, none of that. It was great. So um, anyway, um, even dogs enjoy the banjo. You know what? There's a who who doesn't enjoy the banjo, Gabriel Lord. So that's me. But you guys tell me, uh, tell me in the comments what you guys have been up to music making wise, how your week has been. Did anybody do anything with, you know, we put out some, um, did we put out some stems of some kind? I have this feeling like, yeah, we put out, yes, the samples. That's what it was. When we had July on last week, we put out the samples, I think Stefan did, put out the samples that are, were, um, what was like a guitar thing? And then, oh, the bass thing, Adam's bass. Did anybody do any work with that? Did you remix? Did you flip the sample? Did you build a track off it? If you did, let us know in the comments section. Uh, if it's a thing I can even play, I'll like a SoundCloud link or something like we could even check it out live on air. But so guys, it's just me. I sh maybe if you don't know this already, I'm going to just, you know, get the headline out there. It's just me this week. Periodically, I do, you know, I, I sort of try and balance with you guys the the guest curation hosting side of these streams and then the the not that, the just us hanging out together side of these streams. And there's like, I have more ideas for things I want to do with these streams than there are weeks for me to do them. And some of them are a list of guests that I'd like to, to have on. And then some of them are things like what we might do today, which I'd been kicking around this idea for 
uh, on my list of ideas. I've been kicking around this idea of doing some live on air collaboration. And then last week, and I wish I could remember who it was so I could give him a shout out, but somebody, um, wrote to us. I don't know if it was in the comments. No, I don't think it was. I want to say, Oh, I think it was a, a tweet. Wait a second. Maybe I can even shout him out. Hang on. Can I do this live and fast? I'm going to my Twitter. I'm going to, uh, I think so. Yes. Yes. Mitch, Mitch mood 88 on Twitter. Um, he said, uh, an idea for stream content, have us submit 16 to 32 bar piece, kind of like an idea seed, then see what you or a stream desk can, stream guest can do with it. Um, and then he, he's got a, looks like a screenshot. He says, I, I say this because I just got to this point and he shows his song and he says, I don't know where to go with it. So, um, so anyway, yeah, I wrote back and I said, I've been thinking about that idea. And, um, then I thought, well, if he's kind of itching for that idea right now, and I've already been thinking about it, then let's do it. Let's just like bump it up the list. So that's what we're doing. We're going to, we're going to do some collaboration today. Now I could, I haven't done it. I mean, well, so there's, there's so many ways we can do the online stream collaboration concept. And I think we're going to try the most basic and vanilla version of that. Is it vanilla or vanilla? Let me know in the comments, vanilla or vanilla. But anyway, uh, we're, we're going to do the most basic version today, which is that I'm going to collaborate with stuff that you guys have submitted. And I have a link. I mean, we're, there's already stuff in there, so we maybe are okay. But if you want to throw stuff in the uh, Dropbox, there is a Dropbox link in the, in the stream description where uh, people have been dropping their, their stuff. Um, oh, I'm just keeping an eye on the comments. Drew Magoo Music, are these streams going to end when the quarantine ends? Drew, I don't know. I mean, you know, we have so enjoyed doing them that I don't think they will. Here's here's the, the, the upside and the downside. And I'll just, you know, I, I think I'm always incredibly candid and just honest with you guys. So, like, here's the deal. I just, I got other stuff that I do. So, like, <laughs> I have to balance the stuff that I do with doing the, this stuff. And, and, and if this stuff be, becomes more important than the other stuff I do, then, then that may, helps make that decision. So, um, I don't think we will stop doing the streams. We enjoy them too much. All of us, you guys seem to enjoy them. I certainly enjoy them. Uh, the company enjoys watching them, if not hosting them and, and sort of facilitating them. So, uh, and, and they enjoy that too. So, so I, I think the plan is to do them. I do know that, um, I've started even while we're kind of still in this phase of lockdowns and quarantines and, and phase ones and phase twos. Um, I've started thinking that it may be worth doing a sort of a rename your reason to stay inside when we started was in the, in the midst of the lockdown when it was like literally like. You know, if you don't have to go outside, don't go outside. And that uh, that's a, a little bit topical and, and it's it's adapting and changing. So we might just change the name to something more um, sort of evergreen, as one might say, in a business conference room. But um, in fact, if you guys have ideas for stream names, throw them in there. Um, I've started kicking around thoughts of what, what we could do it with the stream name. Um, and then... With that, maybe, you know, I don't know if we'll move from a weekly thing to a every other week kind of thing, or maybe we won't. Maybe we'll keep on the weekly thing. I don't know. It, this is a big, gigantic question mark, Drew, to say that I'm not quite sure, um, but I do see um, some people in the streams. Please don't stop. Don't stop the streaming. Please don't stop the streaming. Ding, ding, Rihanna. Um, so that was uh, terrible, by the way. And uh, let's be glad that this isn't going to be archived forever on the Internet. Um, but anyway, uh, so yes, I'm going to go back to the, the concept here. So we're going to be doing some, some collaboration where I'm going to open up some of your stuff and then I will add something to it. And if that sounds like there's a lot of uncertainty in my voice, it's because there is, I don't know what I'm going to add to it and it could be good or bad. I, I don't know even what you guys have submitted. That could be good or bad. No, I'm sure, I'm sure what you guys have sent me is great, but, um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and uh, approach it. And what I was thinking about with it though is that uh, for some of you, and let me know. Um, I'm curious what kind of collaboration you guys do because collaboration is a big word that people throw out there. Oh, you know, a lot of times you'll see on forums, "Hey, does anybody want to collab?" And um, I don't. I often wonder how much people are actually collaborating versus 
wanting to collaborate, if that makes sense. Um, in some ways, uh, I've, I've at times likened it to uh, kids in junior high school talk about dating a lot, but not many of them are actually dating. They're just, you know, oh, let's go to the, well, I'm going to date myself here by saying, let's go to the mall. Like, who does that? But anyway, um, you know, people, people talk about it more than they do it with collaboration. And so I'm curious what you guys are doing with collaboration. And I don't blame people for talking about it more than they do it. Collaboration is hard. It's, it's hard on a lot of levels. It's hard because, first of all, finding someone you're compatible with is sometimes hard. You, you realize you, our musical taste is so unique to us, and then suddenly we want to find someone that matches that musical taste. At least, maybe they don't make music the way we make music, if, then we wouldn't need to be collaborating. But we actually, what we want is someone who does things differently than we do, but that they like what we do, and... We like what they do. It's like this, you know, in economics class, I remember um, they were talking about you know, basic basic concept of economics and the barter system. They talked about this thing called the dual coincidence of wants, that in a barter system, the only way things work, if I want to trade my bike for your, you know, cast iron pan, well, we need the dual coincidence that I want a pan and you want a bike, and that's what we happen to have in that moment. And so in the same way, it's like collaboration is that tricky thing where you have to like what I do, I have to like what you do, we kind of have to like working together, you know? It's it's a It can be a tricky thing to, to find great collaboration, and that's why when people do find collaboration that they really like, they, you know, hopefully they keep it going. It's all, That's why it's always sad when great collaborations sort of fall away to sort of interpersonal conflicts and egos and, and all that kind of stuff, you know? I mean, just not for nothing, you know, I think about things like we, we missed out on uh, 10 years of Lennon-McCartney songs because those guys were great at collaborating but not great at getting along in the 70s, you know? So anyway, it's tough to find collaboration. So, um, but... But I'm curious. Uh, let's see. I'm going to look in the comments to see what um, people say. Ali Hoopa was the best platform. I know. I agree. It was pretty good. Um, see, Reason, see, Reason can be run on an iPad Pro. Uh, no, I don't think Reason can be run on a... Maybe. Oh, I don't know. I actually don't know about... It. Does the iPad Pro run regular, like, desktop binaries? Then maybe it can. I don't know. Um... So Reason should come up with cloud-based service for collaboration. Good idea. I'm, I'm sure you've got my green light. I'd make none of those decisions, but yes. Um, what else? Uh, Dropbox. Okay, so people are talking about how they do collaboration. Um, how do people actually find collaborative partners? Do you guys, do you do it via um, SoundCloud? People that follow you on SoundCloud, and then you connect and DM on SoundCloud, or are you doing it via forums? Or um, it, It's interesting because in... I often wonder about it in the electronic world. We're going to get to making music in a second, but I often wonder about in the electronic world, something that always has bothered me when I've been doing, you know, DAW-based music production is that a lot of the norms of traditional music don't exist. And what I mean by that is, for example, I was a kid playing guitar, learning guitar. Step number one, learn how to play other people's songs. How many times have you guys opened up reason and started recreating someone else's electronic track probably probably the vast minority of you if anyone does that to learn i mean what a great way to learn but we don't do it <laughs> instead we open up this blank canvas and we just go like now i will music i will music here until it's good and and that's like what a weird learning curve to just suddenly you know and that's why a lot of times in electronic and hip hop and these sort of production styles, you kind of run headlong into a wall because you instantly realize that what you're doing isn't quite right. You don't know how to close that gap between the music you listen to and the, and the music that you're making. And so that is solved in traditional music. That is solved through just the normal process of as you're learning the instrument, you're learning songs. And as you learn songs, you learn certain ones that you like more than others. And those things that you like more than others teach you certain phrases and musical vocabulary. And that musical vocabulary and those phrases form your personal aesthetic and your style. And like, before you know it, you're like a musician that is playing and writing originals and doing all those things, but you didn't start there. It's much more rare. It's almost the inverse that 
it's way more rare that someone picks up a guitar and goes, let me see, how do you play this thing? I will figure out how to do this by writing songs and putting them out on SoundCloud right away. <laughs> like, that just is not how that goes. Uh, Greg Smith says he does do this, but it's uh, not, not super common for him to... It's not common. I don't know if he means it's not common for you to do it often or it's not a common t uh, technique to do that. But yeah, it, it's people don't do that. And the other thing people don't do that is solved in a natural musical collaboration world is you don't get together and play. You know, like if you're if you make trap beats, how often are you getting together with seven other people to make trap beats in a room and sharing what you've done and or or making the drums while someone else makes the bass drum a uh, bass line while someone else makes the the synth leads like zero never never happens traditional music happens all the time it's built into the process because if if you play guitar and your buddy plays bass you your bass buddy probably has a way less fun time playing without you and to some degree, vice versa. Sorry, I'm sorry, bassist, but I can have a little more fun on guitar than I think you... Well, you tell me I'm wrong. But anyway, um, you know, the, uh, the people get together. You just get together all the time. In fact, you get together so much in so many different settings that you start mingling and meeting people and, and, and bands play gigs and the opening band, you get to know those guys. And, you know, so there's, there's just this natural stirring of the pot and collaboration comes from interacting and interacting means encountering other musicians. And so doll music is so locked into people sitting in their houses, staring at a new blank document, and it's just on them to, like, do everything, write all the parts, you know, mix it, master it, publish it, promote it. Like, it's such an army of one philosophy that it, it really, it is kind of the big weakness and and i agree with you guys who are sort of missing ali hoopa you know i think a lot of us do and um that's what that was aiming to solve you know and and hopefully uh something else whether that's through us or or another company something else comes along that does tackle that same issue of getting to stir the pot and create these interactions between people that work in platforms that don't allow for that same natural mingling and that exists so anyway, um, should we get to it? We're, I'm, I'm 20 minutes into my stream and I've just been wonking on about philosophy here. Um, so maybe we should just get into it. So I think what we're going to do, it's going to, we're going to figure this out as I go. Um, but, um, I'm going to just sort of open up some of the ideas that are, you guys have put into this folder and, uh, I haven't, what I've been thinking is to make the most of this time. I probably won't do a ton to any one thing. Like I was thinking maybe quantity over, well, not quality, but quantity over comprehensiveness might be sort of the, the way to go. I mean, you guys also, I, you know, you can tell me and Stefan, as the comments are flying by, um, if, if, if you see sort of a, a general idea of what, whether people want me to stick on one track for a long time or to kind of jump around and, and, approach collaboration on multiple different tracks that's sort of where i'm leaning that i would i think that's maybe the right way to go is that i'm going to open up something add some collaborative thing to it maybe more than one thing but maybe one thing you know and then just sort of and then move on and, and see what else we can get to so um now oh uh, mark says ryan pulls up a uh, reason 11.5 <laughs> with skype zoom future no, that is not true um but wouldn't that be something right uh so okay well let's see let me so we're going to open these up every time i open up a file i am going to uh we're gonna i'm gonna go away so get used to hearing my voice go away for a little bit while uh we open these things up and i will say if people um in here's this is collab collaboration 101 here um if you're going to collaborate with another reason user there's some things you should know number one is if you're using a ton of vsts and they don't own those vsts you're in a bit of trouble um that's true for rack extensions as well so if you if you're going to be collaborating with someone it's usually considered kind of good etiquette to bounce your channels that use those things to uh audio inside of reason um, and, or, or if you're using reason as a plugin, I guess you would, I don't actually don't know how it works in other, 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 uh, 
platforms like live and stuff are so used to nobody having the same thing that I'm not actually don't even know how the collaboration mindset works there. But um, if you bounce your VST things to audio and then you can either mute or delete them if you want to keep them in there so that you can modify them or maybe the person you're collaborating with does have that VST or wants to buy it, then you can keep them in there and you mute it and then that person will get a, a warning that there's VSTs they don't have, but they still have the audio of that. So that's uh, step one. Step two is in Reason, you can go into the file menu and uh, choose self-contained song settings where you can self-contain, that's what it's called, any samples that you're using. And so that could be sampled instruments that you're using on an NNXT. That could be Rex files that you've dragged in from your, your computer uh, hard disk. It could be a lot of things that are kind of external that are inside of Reason running on your computer. They still point to that externality. But once you send it to a collaborative partner, they don't have those things. But you can turn on that self-contained song settings and, and tell Reason which samples you want to self-contain into the Reason file so that when you send it, now it's not looking externally for those sample dependencies. It's actually looking inside the song file itself. So anyway, that's just a, I think uh, most people hopefully know that. And if they don't, we'll soon find out. Let's take a look here. I'm going to open up one and I'm probably going to go away. Um, Which one should I go with? How about Eric Mosby? Eric Mosby, come on down. I think we're going to open up yours. Let's take a listen. I'm probably going to go away any second. Missing VSTs. Okay, that's okay. I'm back. Okay. So um, let's take a listen. Oh, I should uh, let's do a couple of little housekeeping stuff here. I'm going to move my stream software off to the side. Hello, guys. Then I'm going to move. Oh, and then I'm going to go on my stream software. Let's do this. Aha! It's all going well. And let's take a listen to uh, what Eric's track is and see if we can see what what does collaboration mean in this case. Okay. <laughs> Bobby Rutz, Ted Mosby, Schmosby, Eric Schmosby. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm just I'm getting my first listen to this as you guys are getting your first listen to this. So we're kind of we're all in this together. I hope I can do this. <laughs> this always this always feels so. Um, just what was I thinking? Trying to make music in front of people. Jeez. But um. Okay. So so Eric, you've got um, a totally solid sort of uh, disco sort of that that neo disco in the vibe of you know. Daft Punk, um, get lucky kind of style, right? Um, and it's a good feel. And I, I gotta, I'm gonna give you just some collaboration points for labeling your parts because, like, you didn't have to, but boy, those that's a really nice thing for me to understand. How are you thinking of the like this part here? You call it a break. So I already kind of know what I think I'm gonna be hearing here. Let's take a listen. Let's lead into it. Yep. Okay. Now, the question that I then have to ask myself is, what am I going to do here? What am I going to do with this? And, um, you know, one of the things, um, 
I'm just looking at the uh, the things. Here. Is cowbell? Are people hearing cowbell in there? Yeah, maybe. Um, or, got that Daft Punk vibe. Yeah, yeah. You guys, you you got it right in the uh, uh, recent studios. Is there a link to this session? Who do, to Eric's session? Um, no, there is not a link to Eric's session. Um, he he dropped it to me, but I we haven't. You guys haven't published these uh, publicly, and it, maybe that's up to those you guys to if you want to put your songs out for everybody else you can but anyway so um so the the issue becomes um what do i do with this and there's different things we could do um in terms of my collaborate what is my collaborative addition to this right and my collaborative addition to this could either be to add some more parts or it could be to like bounce it you know like really treat it as a sample and bounce it out and you know then chop up and flip that sample and I'm not sure which way I want to go with that, but I think I'm going to go somewhere closer to the first thing. And I want to kind of get a sense. This is I've I've kind of picked a rather busy song for a live on air <laughs> cold collaboration. So I got to kind of come to grips with what's going on here. So let's take a look. Those are great sounding drums, by the way. What is that rhythm? Oh, is it just audio? Where is that coming from? Oh, it's a, that's a group. Oh, I see. It's all a bunch, a whole bunch of groups going on here. Uh, let's take a look at this. Okay. Ah, here's the I see. These are the, the click. Oh, okay, so yes, those drums are coming from audio. Okay. Um one of the things I let's see if I'll do this. Not to muck up your song here, Eric, but I'm going to move those over to that group just so that my brain kind of knows where they are. Uh, let's see what else is happening. Okay. Uh, step one, Ryan starts making changes. Let's see if we can add some stereo width to those guitars. I know this is a mixing thing, and that's fair game and collaboration, you guys. Let's take a listen. Why is that one more quiet than the other? Oh, because I see down here the actual waveforms are quieter. I'm going to trust that there's a reason why he did that. And I'm going to make my... Oh, I realize. Oh, look, I'm coming to you like this. Woo! -hoo -hoo. Pretty exciting. Let me get back to the regular channel. Uh, sequencer. I'm going to turn off... Is that yeah, it's regular now. Okay, I'm gonna put a manual record so that I don't automatically s activate channels when I move around here. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna bring those guitars. I'm not gonna keep them super mono, but I'm gonna do less. I'm just gonna move them off to the side here a little bit. So it looks like he's playing with that volume based on the waveform height in the actual, uh, like in the refrain here. It looks like he's switched the stereo field. Oh, but he, ah, but right. He for him it wasn't stereo field because they were both mono. So maybe I will do the widening, and then I actually will be switching. Maybe that's nice. Okay, we'll see where that goes. Okay, now um, there's coming to coming to grips with some of this stuff. There are you know what I'm going to do. Hang on a second, so that I can see you guys. I'm going to move this off 
your chat off to the side here. Um, Simon Fink says it's a good track. I totally agree. Um, <laughs> massive sax solo, man. I uh, I got a buddy who plays really good sax, but that don't help us now, does it? Okay, so um, yeah, so there are so there's these parts that are sort of the um, what are they called? The uh, there's the guitar, the bass, the drums, uh, are, and some like strings going on. Boy, I wish I had um, Disco School installed. I'd muck with that, but. One thing I'm thinking of doing with the guitars is filtering them in some kind of way that's more than EQ, but more an actual sort of, you know, like a, what do you call it? Stylistic filter. So let's play around with that. Um, in fact, I just installed a new filter. What is that thing? These things. Experimental sounds. Um, I, I will admit, I fully judged these based on the fact that they looked kind of cool. Um, but let's, let's actually see what they sound like. Oh boy. And how they work. Okay, so it's a high pass and low pass uh, filter. Do they have overlapping? They do. They have overlapping frequency bands. Out of curiosity, if I set them both to 1K and mid, what am I looking at there? It's just a very band passed. Okay. I want to keep some of that high in there. You know what? Okay, it's got CB cables. Let's try and put low pass cutoff CV in. I'm gonna I'm gonna run an LFO using Pulsar to the low frequency cutoff because I basically want I'm going to see about moving this knob a little bit now it's a stepped knob so I can't well I could um, have it have it moving in a somewhat of a a stepped well I wonder actually well anyway um, so what I think I'm going to actually do though is I'm going to choose the random huh. by the way I have dogs in my neighborhood uh, you're now going to hear those a lot because Normally, I uh, I have the mic muted when I have a guest, so enjoy that. What happens is one dog gets going, and then they all get going. But okay, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna experiment with a, the random waveform. I may change that, but I'm it's got sort of a stepped motion, so I'm I think that might jive with this knob. Let's take a listen. Not quite sure yet. Take a look at. I'll speed it up.
Okay. Let's start there. I'm going to bring it in with the rest of the track. Okay, so, so now the filtering is sort of... What it's done is it's taken a track that is sort of a traditional disco ensemble in the traditional way, and it's kind of synthified it a little bit just by adding a synth uh, filter. Um, people are asking, did you play the guitar or sample? Um, and I think they're talking... I guess they're talking to Eric. Is Eric... Eric, if, you, if you're... I, I haven't seen you in the chat yet. I hope, I hope you're in the chat. Um... <laughs> Okay, so maybe I will add a synth, since it's kind of a synthy vibe, um, or, or rather by by making that was the point I was making by making the um, the synth sorry by making the guitar filter in a using a synth module of sorts, um, it's kind of now leaned it into a little more of a, a synth direction in a way that maybe we'll put a synth in here. So um, what synth should we use? What should we do with it? Let's figure it out. Oh, the choices. Should I use one of ours or another synth, another rack extension? You know what? I I haven't even explored this one yet, but I just installed it. There's a here Maya Orange Edition. Have you guys tried Maya? Is it good? Should I use it? Let's find out. We don't hear it. Why don't we hear it? There it is. Okay. Let's go check it out in the rack. I haven't played with any of these patches, so let's... Um... All right. Ooh. Hmm. I mean, not for nothing, but let's maybe explore this sound. Um, we got to turn it down. Boy, it's a really bad idea to open up a synth panel you don't know yet. Also, maybe a good idea. I gotta figure out what key this is in, so bear with me while I grab a guitar and noodle around. Because I'm better at figuring it out on guitar, so... I should, I should use, you know, July had that, uh... Had that thing that, uh, told her the key. Those things maybe are pretty handy. Let's take a listen though. My spidey sense is telling me that it Either my guitar's out of tune or it's in uh, A-flat. I hope I'm in tune. Um, let's try that. Let's see what is said. So what I'm going to do um, is, this is just because I'm trying to stream, read comments, and function all at the same time. I, I tend to operate with players on these streams whenever I do things because I don't have to think quite as hard being not a keyboard player. Anyway, okay. Okay, so I'm, I've got that open. Uh, I'm going to turn off chords mode and I'm going to um, mess around with some melodic ideas here.
So I like, there's a little thing there. There's just a thing there that I like that's sort of just, I gotta figure out where to put it, but it's sort of just a, uh, as an end of the phrase. So I think I have the end of the phrase figured out and I'll put something on the top of the phrase, but let me just put that part down. Oh wait, I gotta enable. Okay, there we go. That's the part that I'm thinking of. Okay. And it needs something kind of that leads into that. No. Okay, well, <laughs> I might work my way backwards. Uh, I'm gonna put that just before it. Okay, got half the phrase. Um, okay, so I just need the... Maybe that. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Maybe, but that's getting a little bit high. Um, ah, it's polyphonic though. Balance it out. For some reason, when I do that as thirds, I'm getting a... I've sort of taken what was a nice vibe, and I've gone gone a little bit... Uh, do you like pina coladas? That old, uh, that old song. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Ryan's outdated cultural reference of the week. Who called it? Pina coladas. Ding, ding. You got it. You won the bingo board. Um, I don't know why I chose that, but I'm getting, this is, it's not a, I don't know, the thirds, not a, wasn't a cool vibe. So, uh, let's see. Well, let's do something else. Maybe it is that simple. Yeah, okay, you know what? I can I can buy that. Let's do it. Um I'm gonna put on pre-record. Do that. I'm gonna quantize because I quantize. And I'm gonna I want to keep the velocities lower there. And this one, I don't know if I love it, but... Oh, maybe... Do... Yes, wait, wait, wait. Okay, can I go even lower there? Don't love that. Okay, now I'm... I'm probably overthinking this. Oh, it's... Oh, I see. No, we didn't even discover this on the patch. It does things. Ooh, okay. It does things if you hold it down. You see, it's got its own rhythm to it. Uh, so if I extend that note, maybe that'll do something. Hang on. Mi misquantize. I think that's where it should be. No. That should be here. One of these notes was wrong. Is it this one? I think maybe this was wrong. No, maybe that's that. It should be the same exact thing there. So that should be here. Hang on. Bear with me, folks. There we go. Yeah, okay, that's just got a little bit of, it kind of does its own little, should I even extend this? 
Yeah, maybe. Okay. Just gonna vibe out on that for a second. Okay, I like that. Um, I'm in fact, I like that enough that. Pink Noise Studio. Shall we use Maya one more time? Maybe we should. Let's go in there. Uh, Maya. What do we got? What do we got? Eric, I don't want to lose your thing, so I'm going to... I'm going to save this version that you've given me. And if you want it back, I'll pass it back to you somehow. Nice and soft. No. Although, no. Okay, that's something. Is it though? Let's find out. Okay, I'm gonna drag a scales and chords again. But you know what, I, did I? Was that just complete dumb luck or did I actually choose the right scale? Do I forget? Oh, I did choose a scale. I thought I left it on C major. A flat major. Okay. Now, dare I dig into um, the front panel here for a filter, or do I add a filter myself? Let's turn down the drive. That still seems loud. Is it loud or is it... Or is it distorted? Ah, okay, so those are the on-off buttons. But where is the filter? What am I missing? What am I missing? Anyone, anyone, anyone. Bueller, Bueller. Ferris Bueller reference. That's uh, next. the next square on the bingo card of Ryan's outdated references. Um, okay, I'm going to add I'm going to add a filter without looking for it on the panel there. This is mostly a whoop, a time savings. Yeah, sort of like a a low pass or sorry, band pass filter. Let me take a listen. I'm not sure even if this is the right sound, but let's... It caught my fancy. So let's take a listen. throw that in because it is but I, I think I might kind of make one of those quieter things but we kind of got this little like it's like almost a synth sitar let me just put it in I might it might just be one thing that happens in the four bar loop here I need to record enable that track here we go this is why I've got manual record on so I'm not firing off audio tracks all the time. Okay, here we go. Yeah, 
yeah, just three notes there. Just those three notes. Let's, uh, I'll bring you back. Trying to drive and make music and do all this at the same time. Yikers. Okay, let's, um, oh boy. Let's double click here. Let's quantize because that's what I do. I'm, I'm relentless at quantizing. I tend to, just this is my own personal taste, I tend to quantize in the grid and then add field through the groove mixer and things like that. Not always. Um, and that's less true with acoustic instruments. I trust myself on guitar and my feel more than I trust my hands on a keyboard. So when I'm playing keyboard, I quantize myself. When I'm playing guitar, I tend to not. But anyway, okay, let's take a look at this, and then we might muck with the sound a little bit. But there was some request to see what the this bass is. Everybody likes the bass, and I agree. Should we look into what the bass is in this track? I'll tell you, it's funny because it sounds so... I was expecting, just before I soloed it, I was expecting it to be a, a live bass player. And then as soon as I soloed, I go, oh, I don't think it is. But it just sounds so... It sounds very live, kind of that flat wound uh, thing, flat wound peas. Uh, let's take a look though. What is it? Oh, factory sound bank, compressed finger bass. Should we show devices? Finger bass. There you go. That is a, uh, not, what is it called? Reason sounds. It would be, let's go find it. It's in the reason sounds. If I just do a search for finger bass. Oh, wait. It's all one word. Compressed finger bass. There it is. Yep. All right. You all got that bass. So go go forth and, and make music with it. Uh, Eric, you've done a, a nice little line there. I mean, should we go look at the sequence for a second? Let's explore, shall we? I'm going to close that. And... Sequence. Here it is. Here's his bass line. Let's solo it, shall we? It is, you know, it's fairly fascinating to me that it does sound as live as it does in the mix and as synth as it does on its own. And that's not a critique of, of Eric's playing or the patch or anything. It's just that it's, it's kind of an interesting, like a, um, some, like a sonic illusion in a way that, uh, you, you sit it in with those, uh, you know, sort of disco jangle guitars and that, that classic backbeat. And it just... Kind of does its thing okay now let's see what the hell i've done with this uh odd sitar choice that i just made maybe this is the part where eric goes thanks but no thanks ryan i still stand by it let's see i'm gonna play with the filter settings though and maybe do some other stuff and then maybe we'll jump onto another track Okay, it's weird, but I still back it. Um, but but what I'm gonna do with it is where did that go? What is that thing called? I should just rainbow keys. There it is. I am going to automate the panning on rainbow keys so that it. I, I kind of want this to be one of those one of those headphone things. You know headphone things? Do you guys do headphone things? So hashtag, hashtag headphone things. Um, it's, you know, one of those things where it's like, it, it's it's something you kind of don't notice until you notice it in headphones, and then you are aware of it. But before that, you weren't aware of it. 
And um, so those things, you can take bigger liberties. So like, for example, I'm going to, well, let me start with the extreme. I'm just going to, boy, I hope the stream is uh, coming to you in stereo. I'm going to uh, just do a panning automation. So at the first two notes, dong, dong, bum, bum, that's too, too low for me. Bum, bum, bum. Um, but the first two notes are going to go in one ear and then the third note in another like this. Um, maybe I'll solo it. That didn't pan. But, oh, because I didn't. <laughs> there it goes. Okay. Uh, now that's the extreme version, but let me just put it in with a mix. So now it's going to, you know, it's going to move from one side to the other. But let's make it less... Uh, extreme and, and certainly when you do um, stereo when you're sitting things in stereo the more extreme to the edges you go to the left and right the more it will call attention to itself so I realize that I'm I'm sort of doing a counterintuitive thing here by saying I want to sit it in so that you don't notice it but I'm gonna move it out and do a little stereo panning trick that's it's actually counterintuitive to the goal of being um, subtle but we can go back and make it more subtle by turning it down by filtering it more etc cetera, etc cetera. so so let's uh, try that so there now it's just moving a little bit in the stereo field and let's uh let me go back to it and i'll muck with the, the um the, the the filter just a little bit See what I mean? It's now it's more subtle. In fact, it's so much more subtle. I can go a little more extreme in the stereo panning. Let's try that. Okay. I mean, it's a thing. Would, would that survive the entire collaborative process with me and Eric? Maybe not. Would it be something that is going on through the whole song? Most definitely, probably not. Um, it would be something that maybe comes in later in a refrain. Like it's, it's not a, it's not a call attention to itself thing, but some of some of this collaborative process is kind of coming up with some of that kind of spitball stuff where you just kind of throw musical ideas at the wall and and see which ones stick and which ones don't. And sometimes you'll create those things and then you'll mute them and leave them out until two months later when you are going through, uh, maybe you're mixing it or maybe you've, you're revisiting it to collaborate uh, or, or to, to sort of keep developing it. And then you go, what was that? And you unmute it and you go, oh, you know what? That's actually interesting. So that might be one of those that we would do that with, you know. Anyway, so let's let's move on to a different track because uh, the the day is the day is going. But that's okay. I can I can live with that. I will sleep well tonight knowing that I didn't make Eric's track innumerably worse okay let's um let's check out some of the other tunes let's see what we got here um should i go to um how about michael wood or mitch wood mitch mitch mood is that maybe that's a, a username Michael Wood, In Your Eyes. I'm intrigued by this one because of the the title similarity to the, um, what do you call it? Peter Gabriel tune. Oh, whoa. Hey, now. That's loud and bright. Okay, so I've just created a new audio track here. But let's figure out why it is so very loud. Let's start. Okay, hang on. I gotta figure it out. There's um, Michael's track has some major gain going on, so we're gonna mute me here, and then we're gonna come back here. Oh boy. Step one. Okay, I'm gonna turn down. <clears throat> that's that's the, a lot of it is the uh, 
mastering chain. But maybe I should keep that on. I'll keep that on for right now. Why is that so loud though? Let's see. I mean, I can just, I'll just turn it down for now. There seems to be something else going on though. Also, well, you guys aren't getting the, oh, there isn't delay compensation. Well, we'll see what happens. Let's take a listen. You know, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's take a listen to Michael's track. Kyle in the chat says, was I the only one to take off the headphones when the song started playing in case it was far too loud? Um, that would have been a wise choice there, uh, Kyle, but it, it seems to, not only is it not too loud, um, but it is, um, it's very pretty. Now, Michael, Michael, you're in the chat. Michael Wood, welcome to the chat. What a pretty little tune you've got here. But he says, um, vocals are muted. I noticed that, that down here we have the vocals um, muted. And I don't know if that was by accident, but Michael, we're going to unmute these. Oh, now you're exposed. Let's see what happens here. This is where Michael goes, oh, no, I didn't delete those. <laughs> or maybe he just went, oh, no, I muted those by mistake. Let's take a listen to the vocals. In my own time, I don't feel like I can talk to anyone. reason why that all said and done well holy cow now michael michael you, you let me know is this an original track it's already really good i mean the instrumental was good the music's really good too um uh, let's go back and keep listening to it stefan has already yelled at me because i have a mint in my mouth i'm gonna finish my mint and stop minting into your microphone on time I don't feel like I can talk to anyone I'm the reason why that all was said and done I deserve to sit in pieces on my own While someone new can see the light that you hold All right, Michael, this is my jam. I like a lot of this. I actually don't want to muck with um, a ton of, you're, you're so on the right track with the music um, that I may not, maybe I won't be the, do too much on the music side of things. That's a, that's a dumb thing to say. On the uh, like synth and instrumentation side of things. Well, here's a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I'm curious, this one is still muted. Maybe that's on purpose. Let's take a listen. In your Okay, now this is um, as somebody who's collaborating without Michael in the room, I'm left to kind of understand his intent, and his intent comes from things. Uh, it's like when I see that muted, I go, "Is that muted by accident, or is that muted because he tried something and he didn't like it?" And Michael, uh, allow me to throw as much praise your way up front before I, you know, because one of the keys to collaboration is uh, is 
you know, a very sort of uh, truthfulness with each other. And I think uh, that my hunch is you were trying something and you didn't like it as much as the first half. Um, and does that mean it's bad or wrong? No, but I think my instinct is telling me that he muted that because he was like, nah, I was going for a run. I was going for some melodic variation. It's not quite there yet. Let me, let's like listen again. In your Yeah. yeah, I think that, that what's happening there is that Michael is going, I need a second half to this chorus, and he doesn't quite have something he loves. You can almost hear him, like, I'm, I'm going to make, this is where I become sort of producer uh, profiler and trying to understand what was happening in this moment. My guess is he put that down, and he was like, oh, maybe I'll come back to that, but that kind of marks maybe some territory. Um, but I'll tell you, though, Michael, if you don't mind my collaborative input here, I think that your chorus is stronger through the simple act of repetition. Listen. Listen to this. If this just went... In your and then you did it again. In your you know, you, could, you can get away with doing it literally twice. Now, I don't know if we're going to work miracles here, um, but here, let's see. Yeah, so we you just do it twice, and then maybe what we do is, and maybe I will attempt. To, I'll just do this for the sake of doing it, but you obviously would may want want to do it yourself. Is um, we add some harmony, both maybe leading up to it, and then maybe uh, in the chorus as well. And I'm not now. I'm gonna have to put this up front. I'm not the world's greatest harmony figure outer guy on the fly, but I, I we'll try. We'll see what we can do here. And in fact, I'm I'm bad at it in just the right way to make it teachable <laughs> because um, there's a trick that I use that I'll probably have to rely on here to uh, work out the harmony. But maybe that's what this will, this collaboration will be that Ryan sings harmony with Michael if Michael doesn't mind. Let's take a listen. I deserve to sit in pieces on my own. I'm the reason why that all said. Okay, so I think I want to start with just him solo. I don't feel like I can talk to anyone. I'm the reason why that all said and done. I deserve to sit in pieces on my own. Okay, yeah. Um I'm gonna come in there. And I'm just to get some ideas down, I'm going to, I'm just going to start putting things down kind of early on in my harm, harmonic thinking, but I'm thinking something up top like this. Uh, I deserve to sit in pieces on my own. So, boy, I, I hope that I'm remotely in tune. Let's, um, we're going to use pitch edit to help me because I can't quite hear myself perfectly and uh we'll just tweak that down let's see i deserve to see that should go there that should probably be there i deserve to sit in pieces on my own okay yeah although i didn't quite get the um mm, rhythm right so i'm gonna pull that back but dare i turn down my compressor no for the sake of this michael i'm gonna keep my compressor on which I'm sending into uh, re uh, reason which means well I don't think you would keep my vocals on anyway maybe I'm just marking territory but here we go I'm whoops wrong part where does it go the reason oh yeah here it comes I deserve to sit that wasn't right let's try it again I deserve to sit in pieces on my own Okay, I think that was a little closer, at least rhythmically. Let's uh, do the old fix me. I'm gonna when I do harmonies, I tend to kind of squish my pitch variation um, on harmonic vocals more so because uh, 
I let the I let the lead kind of have its character, but then the harmonies I kind of keep them nice and tight. I deserve to sit in pieces on my own. Okay, now let's fix a couple of things. Let's fix. It's gonna get weird here, guys, because I'm about to put a reverb on myself. Even this one. But let's see. Oh, maybe I'll put film score on me. Oh boy. And I'm gonna turn me down. And let's take a listen. I deserve to see it. You know what's bugging me? Oh, what's bugging me is that effect. Hang on. I gotta... I'm gonna temporarily mute that. Um, I'm gonna fix some of the... My rhythm comes in... I come in before him. And that's not cool. I deserve... I might even just do it... Now, I could do that by slice editing, but I might even do it just by sort of doing a, a volume I deserve to sit in pieces on my own yeah I, c I can get away with that on the backing vocal by just just fading in the, the volume envelope on the clip with the clip handles so that he gets he gets to lead the entry I deserve to sit in okay another thing I'm gonna do real quick on my voice is where's my oh boy so many things. Oh, here it is. Audio track. Well, first of all, I'm going to call this Ryan one. And I'm going to add a de -er to my voice. Uh, I'll do Selig de -er to my voice uh, because my voice doesn't need as much sib sibilance. You can hear it kicking in already. It doesn't need as much sibilance as uh, <laughs> as Michael's. Uh, okay. In my own time, I don't feel like I can talk to anyone I'm the reason why that all was said and done I deserve to sit in pieces on my own While someone new can see the light that you bore Okay. Whoa. Um, if I were, hang on, if I were doing this, uh, as a, a full production, I would probably actually double my vocal. I won't double it today because, um, of time, but I would probably record another one of my backing vocals and, and kind of give it a little stereo, but let's come up with some other harmony parts here. While someone... While someone... I gotta work out the parts here, but see the light. I'm gonna work them out live with you guys. Hope you don't mind watching me think. While someone, I gotta learn the words too. While someone, while someone new can see the light that you hold. While someone new can see the light that you hold. That's a pretty line, Michael. I like this. While someone new can see the light that you hold. That you do do do. While someone. While someone. While some. While someone new can see the light that you hold. I gotta get the last part. While someone new can see the light that you. It's the last part. See the light that you. The light that you hold. I think it just goes down like that. My my intonation's a little off, but we'll fix that in the mix with uh with uh, what do you call it? Pitch edit. So let me just see if I can get one of those down just to mark the territory. Oh boy. 
Michael, I wish I understood what made your thing so gosh darn loud. In pieces on my own While someone new can see that's the thing I often do, you'll notice me doing it there, is I start trying to find my pitch before the phrase, and then I can clip that out later. Pieces on my own ma, 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 ma. While someone who can see the light that you hold That was vaguely right. Let's do this. Let's, um, let's move that up. I've now created, see, I, I got clever, and I created a talk to you track, and then a sing like this track. So, um, let's move this in and let's, oh, I, <laughs> after being so clever that I, I forgot to turn on a manual record and, uh, monitoring, but anyway, okay. So now let's, uh, now I think I can go here and I can go to pitch edit and yes, now I can interact with this track without getting that reverb. I'm going to correct and I'm going to solo this one for a second. Well, okay, I think that's me scooping the note, so I'm actually gonna fix that kind of heavy-handedly. Whoa, no, I'm not, because I need that scoop. Okay, we're gonna just live with that. Someone new that should be there. Well, someone. Oh, I see. I went full flat. Okay, let's crank that down. One who can see the light. You can see because I'm not now. Normally, I'd rehearse this part a few times. I kind of get solid on the on the notes, but because we're not doing that, I'm gonna just be a little more extra tweaky on the pitch to kind of get it to where it needs to be. In fact, oh, I was gonna mention this. This is a thing. Well, maybe I'll do this later. But this is a thing I'll sometimes do where I'll actually record a shaky, not their version of the harmony, and then. I will record another one where I sing along with that one and then it kind of keeps me uh, on track. Someone you can see the light that you hold. A little sharp, pull that one down. That you hold. Okay, now let's just drop that in with Michael. Someone you can see the light that you hold. Good enough for jazz. And we're gonna fade in the envelope again. While someone who can see the light that you hold. Okay, so let's lead up here. Down. I deserve to sit in pieces on my own. While someone who can see the light that you Okay, so I'm, I'm going to put harmonies there too. Dare I maybe try and make it go to a three-part harmony there? Let's uh, let's explore some options. In do do do. In do. I think that's where it needs to go. How much do you love me talking like this? I've turned into Mickey Mouse. Your In your. Hang on, I got to do a little uh, mental calculation. I'm grabbing an instrument here. That's what Michael's doing. In, in your eyes. I think that's what it does. Yeah. In your in in your eyes. Oh, then it holds, okay? In your eyes. I don't know what you guys are talking about in the chat. Fifty Shades of Ryan. Oh boy, I don't. I don't know what that means. I'm very disturbed to see what how we got to that uh, <laughs> reference. Yes, copyright claim from Disney for sure, Kyle. In your eyes. See, now I got this little trick. That I've, not trick. A tricky thing, which I'd like to hold the note, but I think I need to follow him a little bit because he goes. In your da, 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 da. He does that little melody. I think I gotta kinda of follow him a little bit. Let's check it out. In your your yeah, okay. <laughs> this is a perfect example of when 
I don't quite have the harmony worked out, but I want to. I'm going to use pitch edit to find the harmony and then maybe re-record it. Let's just, or maybe not. Let's see. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of put down a, a flimsy attempt at it. And um, and then we're gonna we're gonna go in and sort of use uh, pitch edit like a writing tool, basically. I got you. I'm mean, at least trying to get vaguely close. <laughs> Let's try it again. In your eyes. Yeah, okay. Way off on the end. Um, not even in the ballpark, but, but it's vaguely there in the beginning. Let's take a look. In your eyes. Yeah, great. This is, this is a perfect example of being terrible at this um, because... Now we've got a part where we basically have audio material, but no note material. Like I, we've just got me doing his syllables, but not on the right notes. So let's um, let's start by just correcting me to the nearest note where I was aiming. And then let's take a look. I think the first part's kind of closer. In your Correct. In In let's be there. In your Yeah, okay. In your so, do, 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 do. I think those are the notes I want. I'm going to cut that up. Do, do, correct that. Do, do, do. So, yeah, so I want to ping pong back and forth there. That feels wrong. Do, do, do. So now what I would do, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to start moving these around and it may sound, if I end up having to push these notes so far that it actually sounds uh, unnatural, um, then that's fine. I'm just going to find the right note and then I'm going to, uh, maybe if I, if time permitting and all that, I'm going to re-record that, this part once I kind of have it marked out. In your That's what that's what Mark's saying. There's a chord change, so I gotta figure out. Is this? Nope. So maybe I stay up there. Yes. And then what does Mark do? Mark's coming down there, so maybe I will stay here on that one. So. And then maybe that note should be there. Yeah. Right. Okay. So here, I'm going to solo me for a second, and I'll show you this part now is going to sound like way more tuned and synthetic, but this is just, just to find the part. One would uh, hope that I solo the right track there. In your okay, so that that is not what I sang. In fact, if I temporarily reset this, you can, <laughs> this is what I sang. In your <laughs> Oh boy, yeah. That's at these hear me searching. Are like I don't know what Mark, um, what Michael's doing there. Um, but let's go back to the what I changed it to. In your and when you put that in with with Michael, it it sounds nice. In your but now. The only problem is that my vocal, because I was searching and I, I bailed on, I knew I was on the wrong note and I bailed early and I, I, it was just all wrong. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to sing now with myself now that I've marked out those pitches. So, um, let's try something like this. I'll put on the click. In your yeah. Okay. So now I'm just going to record them a overdub myself in the light that you hold in your eyes. 
something like that. Now I still, because it's backing vocals, I am going to still go in there and pitch edit it. Well, and also because it's me singing. So I tend to do that anyway, because, well, for reasons. In your so you see, now I'm singing the actual, um, the notes that we found through searching rather than having to shift them there. So I'm going to get less of that kind of, you know, you know, that, uh, the sound that you get when you, when you're pushing something via a pitch transposition. But now I'm going to move this off to the side. I'm going to move this up here and we're going to drop it in with Michael and see what we get. In your eyes. Great. Okay. I'm actually going to delete my first take. And I'm going to put that there. In your eyes. Okay. Um, one thing to note, I think, let me see if it's true. I'm going to play this. Yeah. Do you, th this is just a thing to think about. This is maybe a thing to think about more. Um, well, if you do your own vocals, great. If you don't do your own vocals and you uh, just do vocal production, uh, one thing to note here. Um, the song is called In Your Eyes, plural, and Michael is singing In Your Eyes, plural, but in my backing vocal, I sing In Your Eye, and the reason I'm doing that, I didn't even think about it when I did it, because I just somewhat instinctively did it, is I'm letting Michael put the consonant on that. I'm letting him say eyes. So if I if we play just uh, the two of us together. In your eyes. It's, it's, he's not putting a big S on it either, but but he gets the S. If I put the S on it, two things happen. One is the sibilant frequencies start, especially if I start doubling my vocal and he doubled his and we add a third part and all that, all of a sudden that S, you know, there's not a lot of value to having 16 S's on a on a word. So, um, so I just let him have it and then I just stay off. That's just a, a fairly common thing you can do on words that end in S, particularly on phrases that end in S. And while I'm talking, I think I realize I still have I still have the DSer on here. No wonder I sound like I'm let me pull that off. It's, oh, it's back. Oh, look at those S's. I was trying to make a point about S's with a DSer on. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, let's um let's add one more part to this. Why don't we? Shall we? We shall. So let's see, I'm gonna do this, put that back on, and let's. Uh, I'm gonna try and figure out a lower part. Lower parts are sometimes harder to figure out intuitively, but let's see if we can do it. You can see the light that you in your in your in your in your in your eyes. That's it. Am I already doing that? No, no. Is it, where's Michael's voice? Oh, it's this one. Yeah. In your eye. Is that the same note as me? No. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm going to have to do the same te technique where I'm going to kind of like get close and then we'll find it and then we'll... We'll do it again. Um, let me make sure everybody's not completely bored here in the uh, in the chat. I'm just gonna check over here. Uh, sounds good. Um, back to the original. Blah, 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 blah. Crosby, Stills, Nash, Young, and Harlan. Oh, if only Stefan. Um, okay. In your in in your in your Okay, let's. Uh, I'm gonna just try something. I'll put this down and then we'll we'll figure it out because I want to hurry. That's another thing. Gotta be quick. Okay, I'll put on the click. Back up a little bit and let's just fudge it. I that you hold in your eyes. Okay. Now you'll notice I didn't. I come in on eyes only on the lower part and that's just because i i don't know that's a taste thing but um it's um 
It's because I kind of like just these two voices. In your... I don't know. It just sounds nice. In your... Um, and so I don't want to come in with some like, you know, low in your... You know, I don't want to put in the low voice yet until we get to here. Right. Now I should probably... Let's figure out these notes. Um, hang on. I'm going to... First, we're going to do this temporarily to move this here. Then I can go back here. Ah, oh, okay, good. Whew. I don't know why I, I put this extra, like, for some reason I have this pressure on myself where it's like, there can be no glitches to the technicalities of this stream at all, but it's live streaming. That's what live streaming is. But I was like, oh no, you had to listen to reverb for two seconds. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm going to look at this part. We're going to kind of write this part. Um, I can already see that note's wrong. Yep. Okay. Um, we're going to add uh, there. See. Now there's that. Here's the tricky part. The tricky part is the. That. Michael comes down to my note. So I got to find a new note there. Maybe I come down here early? I'm not quite sure what the timing is on this one. Let's see. Oh. I think it's actually here where it needs to go. Do you guys know about this, by the way, that um, when you, if you hold down the option key, you, um, while you're in your pitch edit mode, you can change the boundary by which the note, like I'm not warping audio here. I'm actually just moving the, the pitch info. Like if I did this, just as I don't hold down option, I do this. I'm actually, you can see at the top, hopefully that I'm actually stretching the waveform. If I undo that, but if I hold down option and I do this, I'm not stretching the waveform. I'm actually just moving. See, the waveform stays the same, but I'm moving where the, in the waveform, the pitch, uh, bar goes. Uh, I said that you wouldn't believe that I do technical writing for a living. I said that the worst way possible. Uh, <laughs> I gotta fix the pitch again here. Root dirt. I, you know, we may not need to re-record this one. I, There's something about the timing that I'm I'm going to that note in the wrong moment. Let's see. I, I'm gonna jump over to Michael. We'll see what his timing is. See, it's a held note. It's kind of. I wish there was like a very obvious transient that I could see on screen, so I wouldn't have to. Uh, Oh, here, but I can use the pitch information. Uh -huh. uh, Michael, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to tweak your note here, too. Just so that the harmonies kind of land a little harder. I, 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 so Michael's switching his note right there. So now let me go back to me and see where I was putting my note. Ah, see? There we go. Ba -bong. Uh, That's where it should be. I, 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 okay, now next, next problem is Ryan kept holding his note. This is maybe another advantage of not putting the S on is that I can just truncate my note, certainly at least today, artificially, I think. Let's take a listen. And let's get our uh, the start of my note. In your I'm late. I think this one we need to actually solve with uh, slice edit. Let's go to slice edit here. And I'm going to pull that to about there. Right. And I'm going to fade that in a little bit. Okay, let's 
pull this off. Bag it up. Bag it up. Bag it up. Try that all said and done. I deserve. Oh, Chalism, what's the option key? Um, uh, what, it, yeah, some, I hope someone else mentions this because I think it's control on Windows. I, 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 I talk in Mac quick keys, but I'm pretty sure that anything that is an option click on Mac, at least in Reason, is a control click in on Windows. I'm the reason why that all said and done. I deserve to sit in pieces on my own While someone who can see the light that you hold In your eyes I forgot to double this one. Turn on snap. In your eyes Okay, so th I think that'll be my contribution to this one in terms of a, a collaboration. Um, there's this a really nice track, and I got to you know the thing I talked about in the beginning. I mean, these are these were both good. Eric, your track was great too. Um, the and both of them kind of do different things for me. They they kind of tick different boxes for me as a musician. And so um, that thing I was talking about, sort of the dual coincidence of once. You know, if if someone if you're the type of person who likes, you know, like really aggressive bass music or or trap beats and stuff like that, this might do nothing for you. You might just go like, not interested in collaborating. For me, I get all sorts of ideas or things I'd love to do with this. And the same is true for Eric's. I've got, you know, I think we all have different kind of personalities or, or elements to our musical personality. And uh, these kind of tick off different things with me and, and make me want to do different things. But um uh, this is a really nice track, Michael, and I hope you do more and keep developing it. Um, by all means, um, you can use my harmony as blueprints uh, for what you want to do, or you could, you know, w when I jumped in on this, what I the first thing I did was to make a rather e um, strong executive decision to kill off the second half of your chorus and, and simplify by just repeating what you had uh, for the first line, just have you sing it twice. Um, not unlike, I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. You know, you can just repeat yourself. It's okay for a chorus, especially for a hook, to uh, repeat it. But um, you might go, uh, no, Ryan, I actually want to come up with a line there. I need a line, and I want a different melody, and you can scrap this too. But anyway, let's, take, let's just back up and kind of listen to where we, we made it to from Michael. I should go back. I'm going to go back to the very top. I can talk to anyone. I'm gonna try something. The reason why that all said and done. I deserve to sit in pieces on my own. While someone who can see the light that you hold. Hang on, I'm back. Um, I, I muted because I, I started playing around with guitar. In this beginning part, I don't know if I'm going to do this. Especially, you know, we're, you guys have got the other things to do today. But I was thinking about... There's, there's you know, maybe a, maybe a part that could be added to the intro i don't sometimes there's a value right now michael's kind of got a bit of a, a hey there delilah kind of just chord vamp intro
and we could we could add to it I gotta move my capo, hang on. I actually don't even know what key we're in yet. In my own ah, time, we're in e. I don't feel like I can talk. Okay. Just noodling. Don't mind me. I'm the reason why that all said and done. I deserve to sit in pieces on my own. While someone I probably won't add this now. I would I would probably spend some time noodling around. The the, the difficult thing to figure out, and I again this is where I get into trying to read Michael's mind too, is that I think he and I might agree aesthetically that adding something to the, like adding an, a melodic idea to the intro might kind of ruin some of the charm that it begins rather sparse and then Michael's voice comes in with the the vocal and that is a solo vocal and then we build from the, you know, there's a, there's a building to it. And if we did something like this... You know, I'm kind of playing loud just again, but we could do a little melody there, you know, or we could even put it higher. I'll put it higher so you can hear it. I'll try. I'll try and do it without the uh, click on here. But you see what I mean? Like, it's it's not wrong. It's not musically wrong. It's just, it's a little too, like, you know what it is here? I have this thing, I have this thing I refer to as jazz hands. You know, there's an emoji now, I think, that's like, this, this, it's an emoji, you know? But um, it's, it's doing jazz hands. And sometimes there's these musical things that you, you do and you almost feel clever about it. But then you realize it's calling so much attention to itself that it's musical jazz hands. It's just like, ta-da, check me out. I'm playing guitar. And that's just, you know, out of out of respect for Michael's mood and vibe, I don't think I would add that to it. So um Sion, I'm looking at the, the comments there. Sion asks, is the banjo tuned the same way as a guitar? It's not, Sion. Um, it's tuned almost like a guitar at times and then not like a guitar in others. And you got, you just, okay. Dare you, dare you, you know, summon, it's like saying Beetlejuice. Ah, Beetlejuice. Who had Beetlejuice on their 1980s Ryan references bingo card? Um, there you go. If you had that, you can mark that square off my outdated references. Um, it, if if you guys want to summon it, I will play a little bit of banjo uh, on this because it actually is a kind of mood that would work for banjo. Let me, I'll do it, but I'll do it quick, and then maybe we'll jump off. Hang on. I got to go grab my banjo, though. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's see here. Um, marks in E. Oh, that's there. Oh no, it's not there. Uh, we gotta, I gotta move things around a little bit here. This is a, maybe this is a terrible idea, because then you guys are gonna learn the other thing, which is banjos need to be in tune, and they aren't. They often aren't. Then let's put this. Uh, here, it's very compelling. How many people? This is maybe we're setting the world record for the most people ever to watch a banjo tune. Okay, so yeah, let's see. I'll just set up a little loop here. 
of the intro and just noodle on banjo for you. Oh, wait, do this. <laughs> I gotta move the mic down. In my own time, I don't feel. In my so yeah, that's the kind of thing it might do if I were actually. Gonna, maybe I'll record it just for the sake of posterity. Um, I'll probably have to do some kind of loop of it, but it would be something like this. Actually, I'll turn on the click. Oh, it changes later. Oh. Maybe I won't record it. Yeah, I won't, I won't figure out where those chords are happening. But anyway, yeah, that's the kind of thing maybe I would do if I were going to put banjo on it. But, you know, the thing is, I mean, you can already tell, banjo is, um, remember what I was saying about things that call attention to themselves? I don't think banjo has ever been a, um, a subtle thing. Although there, I guess you could do, I could do a, a part that's a little more like, here. If I just do it as a just a back and forth. In my okay, you know what? Here, I'm gonna put this on just for the hell of it. Um, I could do this. I gotta, I gotta turn on my. Uh, I gotta turn the compressor down. But I'm gonna do just a back and forth. It goes like this. And then we're just gonna see. I'm gonna do that for as long as I can while it might work through the whole thing. Let me just see. I'm gonna turn down that click, but I'm gonna have it on. Here we go. I'm also gonna play the right note. I'm also gonna point the mic at the banjo. Oh my God, so many things I gotta do. Okay, let's try this. Talk to anyone. I'm the reason why that all said and done. I deserve to sit in pieces on my own while someone new can see the light that you hold in your. What I realized while doing that is that if we were to keep the banjo in, and we might not keep the banjo in, is it is it ever the wrong time for banjo? I might say no, but you might say it's always the wrong time for banjo. So, um, but in your I'm gonna actually bring it in as a chorus vibe rather than a uh, intro vibe. Um, and I'm going to sit that, I'm going to have to wait. Let me make a dub of my voice. Okay. That's me. Great. And then the banjo, I'm going to sit on one side of the stereo field. Let me jump in here. You know what I did is like, I might've goofed up something here cause I, I hit quantize just so I didn't have to 
worry, but I think I may have misquantized something. Let me take a listen. Yep. Ba -ba, that should go there. Then that should go there. And that should go there. Oh boy. Then that should go there. And then that should go there. Does that get us back on track? No. Oh boy. We got a whole ripple effect of off. Da -da 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 -da. There we go. Now is that back on? Let's fix that one. I shouldn't have, I should have just, I thought it, I would uh, not have to worry about, you know, I remember when I said I tend to not quantize my own performances. Here's a good example of why not, because I was probably closer to on before I did. Okay. And then, um, okay, now we're, now we're just off and running. Should I put a, Echo on it. That's probably overkill. Um, should I put a reverb on it? And we'll sit it over there. In your Yeah, you know, it's um it is what it is. I'm it's a little sharp because I wasn't quite tuned. I was tuning by ear and quick. So let's see. Yeah, that's better. So it's like about almost a quarter tone sharp, but we can fix that um in the mix. Okay, but there we go. That was a tangent that uh, we got onto just um hopefully now I'm going to go back to the um Going back to the comments here, unquantize the banjo, right, George? Yeah, I know. I should have, I should have unquantized it, but that's okay. It's it. We made it. We got there. So let's do this. I deserve to sit in peace. We're gonna listen. Let's listen from the top again, and um, kind of take a look at what we've done here, and then that may be it. I can talk to anyone I'm the reason why that all was said and done I deserve to sit in pieces on my own While someone who can see the light that you hold In your Okay, cool. So, you know, I'm not mad at that banjo, actually. That's like, maybe that's even, uh, it's, it's funny because that's almost one of those versions of, uh, like, dare I refer to it as Mumford and Sons style banjo, but it almost is that sort of banjo in a modern context. But what I would say if I were doing this, if Michael and I were actually collaborating on this for real, what I might sort of suggest for us is that we actually bring that in later. Um, so the first chorus, we would just let it be that wash of vocals, and then we go to a verse, and then we would start building those things. And when we got to the second chorus, we might bring in that do 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 do, you know. And then you could get into those things almost again. Like I, I know I'm gonna be I'm gonna be making references here that maybe not to people's personal musical taste, but I'm gonna do it anyway. You start bringing in drums, a la Coldplay, that fix you sort of style, where you know you can start. We, while the banjo's going, you know, Tom's kind of building, and then it builds to the big wash and instrumental, and there's strings, and it's whoosh, you know, yeah. This is um, this is the kind of thing you could do with it. It gives me ideas. I hope Michael, it gives you ideas. Um, and if you want these parts, you're you're welcome to. We can. I'm sure there's some way we could connect, and I could get them to you. But you could also just, you know, keep, you're doing a fine job on your own. 
by uh, making this song. So, you know, my collaboration live on air doesn't, I'm not going to barge my way into your track. You're doing quite a good job. Why don't I do this real quick? Let me see if I can. Can I set up a loop? Am I that clever on the fly? I'm going to try and set up a loop and then we're going to say goodbye for the day. Um, does that go here? The only problem is, which one's that? Is that coming here? Can I just crank my, maybe I can do this. I tell you, Michael, I have no idea why your track is so hot, but it is so hot that I have to like talk like a creeper. Isn't that weird? All right, but let's, uh, here, let's see if that works. That vaguely works. <laughs> what do we feed? Oh, well, here's one. Oh, hang on. Hang on, is that why? No, that's not why it's so hot. Okay. Well, we are going to turn down the master bus. Okay. Well, we're going to vaguely try that as our outro. It's going to sound a little weirder than normal, but it'll do the job. Michael, thank you. Eric, thank you. Everybody else who submitted things, thank you. Just know that if your tracks are not going into a bin, I actually, I often will go into those when I'm thinking of content for future streams. So if I didn't pick your thing, I may go through it later and, and we'll do more. And let me know in the comments if you guys like this, want to do more collaboration, don't want to do more collaboration. I have other ideas for how we can do collaboration where if we get really complicated, we could actually form collaborative teams via Zoom breakout rooms. I haven't even looked into this entirely, but my thinking is that we could, you know, we, we could do this in, in, a, in a together kind of way. We got to figure that one out. But uh, Michael Dugan says more collab next week. Maybe, uh, maybe we will. Should we? We could just do a part two next week. I'm not quite sure. Um, we'll see how it goes. I'll read the comments. I'll get caught up with you guys. But listen, I had a ball with you today. I have a ball with you every week. I'll see you next week. And go, go make some music now. Now it's your turn. So take care. Stay inside. Stay safe. Be well. Take care of your friends and family. Let's, let's all get through this weird time together.